So, have you ever been staring at your Proxbox dashboard and just had that feeling that your system is, well, breaking the laws of physics? You know you set a hard memory limit for a VM, but the UI is screaming at you that it's using way more than it's even allowed to have. Okay, let's dive into this super common and, yeah, super confusing little quirk. Right, you're not going crazy. You're probably looking at a number just like this one, just sitting there on your dashboard, basically mocking the very limits you so carefully put in place. It just feels impossible, and let's be honest, it's a little bit alarming. How in the world can something use more than 100% of itself? You know, the source material I was reading just nails it with this analogy. It's that exact same feeling of disorientation. You know for a fact the gas tank has a fixed size, but the needle is telling you there's more fuel in it than it could possibly hold. It makes you start to question the gauge itself. And if you're thinking this is some weird isolated glitch on your system, trust me, it's not. We see this story pop up all the time in the community. Someone trims a VM down to exactly 4 gigs only to see the interface report 4.05 gigs in use. Another person sees the same thing on an 8 gig Windows VM. So, what is the deal here? So your first instinct, naturally, is probably to panic a little. You're thinking your VM has gone rogue, it's ignoring its limits, something seriously broken. Is it a glitch in the matrix? Or is it just a misunderstanding of what the matrix is actually showing you? Let's bust this myth right now. Okay, this is the most important thing to understand. What you see on the dashboard is not what is real in terms of resource control. The Proxmos hypervisor is, without a doubt, enforcing the memory limit you set. Your VM is not magically grabbing extra RAM from the host. That boundary is secure. So, just to be absolutely crystal clear, what you're seeing is a reporting artifact. It is not a system failure. Your hypervisor is still the boss, and the limits you configured are still being respected. All right, now that we know we don't have to panic, let's put on our detective hats. Where does this totally misleading number actually come from? It's time to follow the clues and find the real culprit in the reporting chain. So if we know the hypervisor is doing its job and enforcing that limit, then the error or quirk has to be somewhere in the communication line, right? What is actually happening in that chain, from the guest VM all the way to your dashboard? Well, it's basically a three-step process. First, inside your VM, the operating system is using RAM, but not just for your apps. It's also using it for its own internal stuff, like file caches and system buffers. Step two, the QEMU guest agent, which is kind of like our inside man, reports this total memory usage back to Proxmox. And finally, step three, the Proxmox UI takes that slightly bigger number and does the math, which gives you a percentage that inches just over 100. And right there, that's the smoking gun. It all comes down to the definition of total memory. See, the guest agent is really thorough. It doesn't just report what your active applications are using. It reports everything the OS has its hands on. The page cache, kernel space, all that system overhead. That's the extra little bit that pushes the final number over the top. Now, if you're thinking, hmm, I don't remember seeing this so much before, you're probably not wrong. This isn't a new bug, but it definitely became way more noticeable recently. Before Proxmox 8, the reporting was a little different, but with version 8.0 and later, some updates to the dashboard and how it handles these detailed stats, well, it just created the perfect storm for this overreporting. At this point, it's just considered normal behavior. You know, there's this fantastic little anecdote from the forums that just perfectly captures how deep in the weeds this knowledge is. When you have experienced users literally debating which search engine is better for finding the official documentation on an issue. That tells you this is not obvious. It's the kind of tribal knowledge you only pick up by being deep in the community. Okay, so we totally get the why now. So let's move on to the what now. How do you deal with this? How do you manage it? Here's a straightforward playbook for taming that dashboard and getting some peace of mind. This playbook really boils down to five key things. First, make sure you have the QMU guest agent installed. That's non-negotiable. Second, think about using a little trick we'll call cautious ballooning. Third, Always, always check your host resources for the real story. Fourth, try to keep up with the Proxmox docs. And maybe most importantly, do not panic when you see that number tick past 100%. So what in the world is this cautious ballooning? It's actually a pretty slick workaround. First, you enable the ballooning device for the VM, which is normally used for dynamic memory. But here's the trick. You then set the minimum and the maximum memory to the exact same number. For whatever reason, this seems to get the UI's reporting to calm down without actually letting the VM's memory change dynamically. And honestly, all of this leads us to the golden rule, the single most important takeaway. Just for a second, ignore the UI. Is your VM performing well? 
Is your host's memory stable and not under pressure? If the answer is yes, then you have to trust the system over the stat. Real-world performance is always, always the ultimate source of truth. All right, let's wrap this up with just a final thought on what it means to work with these incredibly powerful and, yeah, sometimes quirky, complex systems like Proxmox. I have to share this comment from the source material because it's just perfect. It's that knowing wink between sysadmins, right? Because, yeah, on a multi-core system, your CPU usage can absolutely go over 100%, and that's also perfectly normal. It's just a great reminder that these systems have layers upon layers of complexity, and the metrics aren't always going to be intuitive. And that really brings us to our final question, doesn't it? What does this little reporting quirk actually tell us about system monitoring in general? I think it's a great reminder that any single metric when you look at it in a vacuum can be incredibly misleading. True understanding only comes from seeing the whole picture, from knowing how the data is being collected, and from always, always prioritizing real-world performance over some cosmetic number on a dashboard.